In November 2020, ICME published its position statement on climate change with commitments to work with all stakeholders from governments to communities around the world to deliver a sustainable future for all. The ICME Board of Trustees has identified climate change as a key area of action for the institution. And over the forthcoming days, weeks, months and years, there will be much activity to demonstrate the role of chemical engineering in addressing challenges represented by climate change and also help equip members to address the challenges. The institution will work to support members and the profession by sharing information on new technologies and good practice and support knowledge and skills development. I would like to encourage members to engage with work being carried out in this critical area, as it's essential that we chemical engineers all play our role in contributing our specialised skills to make a difference. Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to this short recording that we're making today. My name is Andrew Jamieson. I'm a past president of the institution, and I'm chair of the institution's working group on climate change. My background is very much in the oil and gas business, uh, and uh, I'm joined today by my colleague on the committee, Mary Stewart. Mary, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you very much, Andrew. Hi everyone, I'm Mary Stewart. I'm the CEO of Energetics. We are Australia's largest and oldest specialist energy and climate risk consultancy. Um, as Andrew said, I'm a member of the, the working group that's delivering the commitments in the climate change position statement. And I was one of the three person drafting group that, that pulled together the position statement. So myself, Mark Epsey and, and Steph Simons worked on it. Over to you, Andrew. Thanks, Mary. Well, I think everyone will be aware that the uh, institution published its uh, statement on climate change in, uh, in uh, 2020, and that was done after very extensive consultation in a, an organization where there are more than 30,000 members. Of course, there will be quite a broad range of views, but the final position statement was supported by the overwhelming majority of, of the membership. And, and therefore we feel that it is uh, a representative of the majority of the, of the institution. Mary, would you like to give us uh, uh, an overview of uh, some of those commitments? Thanks, Andrew. Before I describe the commitments, I thought it was worth just explaining a little more about what we went through when we pulled together the position statement. And what really stood out for me when we started out on the journey was that the Board of Trustees said that we should be brave. They didn't task us with being ambitious. They didn't say, look at Paris and do that. They said, be brave. And for me, that was really liberating. And it really gave us a license to, to push the boat out and, and to, to write a position statement that the Institute could be proud of. And as Andrew said, we went through a number of different stakeholder engagement processes and did engage with the entire membership and came up with nine principles to, to guide the institution as it moves um, through the challenges over the next couple of years. But what really became obvious to us as we worked through all of this was that these position statements can be applied in different context, contexts. And what we've done is we've divided the commitments into three contexts. We've got commitments that are specific to the ICME, the institution and what they do. For example, the net zero commitment, which is about net zero operations for the institution itself. Then we articulated those principles um, for the members and what the members should look to do in addressing climate change. So an example there is looking what they need to do, for example, with continuous professional development. But then the really big one is what do these principles mean for the, the traditional industries within which our members work? And that one, the big one there is the just transition and what we do to, to help our members as we move to a less carbon intensive economy. So the commitments are broad and they're deep and they are challenging. And I think that they're a proud outcome from the process that we went through. Well, thanks, Mary. 
Um, just a little bit about the working group itself. The, um, uh, the working group is composed of senior and experienced fellows of the institution, and we cover uh, the, the, the spectrum of activities of the institution from qualifications, education, the learned society, as well as uh, uh, the, the regional perspective and member engagement. So we have a, a pretty formidable group. And that group has reviewed the, um, the, 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 com the 18 commitments in, in the statement and uh, are working well, uh, to, uh, to review and monitor the progress made against these uh, commitments. Mary, um, do you want to say something about uh, what um, uh, responsibilities the, uh, the, the, the working group has? Thanks, Andrew. And just um, to clarify, so I'm on the, the working group representing the Energy COP, and also I'm on the, the governance panel of the ICME. So I bring those two, two schools to the working group. And really what we're looking at is not how to do the actions or, or not to deliver the actions ourselves. These are broad reaching actions and they're not going to be easy to deliver. And what we're trying to work out is, is who are the enablers in the institution? Who should be in charge of that commitment? We'll define the actions or we will help those groups define the actions. But it's about working out how to massage all of these commitments through the government structure, through the existing organizations, not to reinvent the wheel, but to enable all of the inflows within the institution to do the right thing. Well, thanks, Mary. And, uh... Uh, some of the work that we've done already, the, one of the first tasks was to review the 18 commitments and to prioritize these uh, and, and, and divide, divide them up in, uh, in a, a priority order. We have uh, three phases and we've, we've done that based on the uh, complexity of the commitment, the impact that the commitment will have on climate change, and of course, the time to deliver. So we have these three phases and each member of the working group has been assigned or has volunteered to be the lead uh, on, on uh, each particular commitment. And we must recognize and acknowledge the, the very good work that is already going on across the institution. And let me just give one example in the medals and awards group. They are now incorporating a, a, a criterion and a focus on climate change in their evaluation of awards. There is a lot of work to be done, uh, a lot of work uh, which will call on the best uh, um, efforts of the members of the institution, but it's extremely important and that this exciting and critical time in the light of COP uh, meeting coming up in Glasgow, there is so much more we have to do. And so I would encourage everyone uh, in whatever way, please give yourself some time and make the efforts to make a contribution to these uh, commitments. So thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Mary, and uh, we wish everyone a good day. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers, everyone.